if you were going to present these results in a poster or a paper, then it's always good along with the results of the statistical analysis to have some kind of visualization so that the people you are presenting your data to can find it easier to understand what the results are visually. In the beginner lessons, we saw that it was actually quite easy to do a box and whisker plot simply by using the plot function with data that had a discontinuous or factor for its x or independent variable. So that is a situation we have here. Color is discontinuous. It's our independent variable and it's a factor. So all we have to do is use the typical dependent variable tilde independent variable setup and specify the data frame that we want to use. So if we want to see what the results look like for the straight ERG data versus the transform data, we can do these two plots here. In this diagram, we see both of these plots on the same screen. The one on the left is the one we did using the ERG factor data frame. That's the untransformed data. This has the advantage that the units on the Y axis are the actual measured voltage units. So if we look at the distribution of the data, it makes sense in units that we are used to. The transform data is a little more obscure because the Y axis is now on a log scale instead of on a linear scale. So as I said before, most of us can't really think about logs of voltages in our head. However, the actual interpretation of the box and whisker plot makes a lot more sense based on the outcome of the statistical test. The amount of overlap of the error bars is an indication of the significance of the test. And if we look at the untransformed data, the error bars are only barely overlapping. But the transform data, which is the actual valid test that we ran, we can see that the error bars overlap quite a bit. And so in terms of the users understanding the significance of the test, it makes more sense to use the box plot of the transform data, even though the scale is a bit ugly. If we knew how to do a more sophisticated plot, we could change the axes so that they displayed the actual numbers, even though the scale is logarithmic. But that's beyond the scope of what we're going to do in this class. The other option that we have for doing plots is to use a different library than the built-in plots. The built-in plots are fine for just getting a look at your data. But if you're actually trying to do presentation quality data, there's a library called ggplot2 which contains a function called ggplot. And that is a function that allows you to make a very wide variety of different kinds of plots. We are not going to go into the details of how to use ggplot in this class, because that's the topic of a whole another course. But we will go ahead and use it. I have here actually two plots that are on top of each other. So here's the basic setup for the plot. And then I'm asking it to create a box plot, but also to create a plot called a violin plot. Let's go ahead and run this and see how the two things are different. So we load ggplot and then do the plot. It is an overlay of the box and whisker plot, which we have seen before, but with another kind of plot called a violin plot. And this violin plot shows us uh, in a graphical way how our data are distributed. So this shows us actually what one of the reasons why our blue data was so weird and not normally distributed. The, um, the red data is kind of skewed, uh, but it is more or less still a bell-shaped curve, whereas this has got this weird lump up here. Uh, I should actually go into the ggplot documentation and figure out how to designate the colors because the default color scheme here is pretty weird because the red data is being shown in blue and the blue data is being shown in red. But as I said, this is sort of beyond the scope of what we're doing in this class. 
I can do just one of the two plots by commenting the other one out. So if I comment out this box plot line and run it, I will get only the violin plot. Or if I comment out this line and then I'll have to get rid of this trailing plus sign, I can make it produce only a box and whisker plot. This is a little bit fancier than the built-in box and whisker plot that you get without using ggplot, but you can control the colors and you get these nice little outlier dots, which is also kind of cool. Here are the two kinds of plots shown on the same screen. If I do them separately and don't overlay them, you can see that there are a lot of options of making fancier kinds of data visualizations, and we're really only scratching the surface of what is possible to do with ggplot.